In January 2018, Folio held a developer meeting in Madrid, Spain. This is a summary of the topics discussed at the meeting and the next steps coming out of the meeting. The attendees gathered on the last day for a picture. The URL is a link to a Google Drive folder of agendas, notes, and presentations from the meeting. This URL will be repeated at the end of the presentation. This presentation also includes links to other documents from the meeting, and the URL for the presentation itself will be included on the last slide. There were 61 people at the Folio meeting in Madrid, and this follows a trend of continued growth of participants at these meetings. Four months ago, there were 47 people at the meeting in Montreal. This meeting saw expanded attendance from all of the roles in the project, and this is the first such meeting that included subject matter experts. The meeting in Madrid also included new participants, Duke University, At Colt, Auburn University, Hermasoft, and the University of Colorado at Boulder. All told, there were 18 organizations represented in Madrid, up from 12 organizations in Montreal four months ago. This is a rough agenda for the Madrid meeting. As with the Montreal meeting, the first day consisted mostly of presentations that set the stage for the breakout meetings and gave a summary of major changes to the Folio platform since the previous meeting. On Tuesday and Wednesday, the attendees divided up into breakout sessions by topic. Framing questions, notes, and the next steps from each breakout session are in the Google Drive folder. At the start of the day on Monday, John Law from EBSCO and Sebastian Hammer from Index Data offered introductory remarks on the state of the project and where we are heading. This quote from John Law offered congratulations for making it to the alpha version milestone and encourage us to reach for the next milestones. Sebastian Hammer put our work into context by pointing out that Folio is not about building an integrated library system, but a significant part of what we're doing replaces the functionality of an integrated library system. He also pointed out that reaching the first version of Folio is an important goal, but how we get to that first version, energized and excited about what we've built, is as important as the functionality itself. Sebastian went on to say that an upcoming challenge for the project is that there may be more than one roadmap coexisting and that as a maturing platform, we can be open and flexible to the needs and activities of many different groups. A platform can support a coalition better than a monolithic application. Several key people in the project discussed important changes since the developers previously met and demonstrated major new functionality to the Folio platform. Index Data completed its initial work on the Codex Search app, as well as developing the Inventory app and working with the development team from Frontside on integrating the EBSCO Knowledge Base app into the Codex. The Inventory app includes the functionality that was formerly in the Items app, and the Items app is being removed from Folio. In the last four months, we've also seen the growth of functionality that goes across the entire platform, like the ability to put notes on records of any type and notifications to users when they are mentioned in notes. The development team from Stacks completed initial versions of major parts of the apps covering the acquisitions functionality. Key people in the project also briefed the developers and designers on major changes to the platform and the tools underpinning Folio. The designers are working on a user experience storybook that describes and demonstrates how the various user interface widgets work. They also added accordions or, or sections of the user interface that fold and unfold to hide and unhide details of a record. 
several changes were made to the server side software that bring the platform along towards maturity, including storing deployment configuration in a database and enabling the Okapi gateway to determine the proper versions of server-side modules that match a desired client-side configuration. Multiplexing interfaces were added to the Okapi gateway, which allows more than one server-side module to respond to requests from a client. The development group from FrontSide contributed a Stripes command line interface that eases the development process for app developers. FrontSide also submitted changes to Stripes to make the three-pane interface responsive to mobile and tablet browser sizes. Lastly, there is an increased focus on automated test coverage, which we will talk about in a later slide. Harry Kaplanian and Kate Burima described the updated roadmap. The development team is now aiming for a beta milestone of the first version that is due in June 2018. The beta milestone aims to be feature complete, and the remaining part of the year will focus on fixing bugs and refining functionality towards the first release at the end of the year. In addition to functionality specified in the special interest groups, from now until June, the developers are focused on several high-level platform needs, uh, including locations, discussed in a later slide, reporting, also discussed in a later slide, data flow between domains, such as having an updated record in the order domain trigger the creation of an instance in the inventory domain, data loading, and localization. The product owners formalized some of their processes with the introduction of the UX prod project on issues.folio.org. The rows from the feature backlog spreadsheet are being turned into epics to be tracked on issues.folio.org by the product owners. These epics are refined into features and then into development tasks. Epics in the UX prod project have an uncompleted status representing work that the SIG knows needs to be done, but hasn't yet been broken down into features and development tasks. A reminder that everyone is welcome to look at issues.folio.org and add yourself as a watcher to any ticket in the system. In keeping with the theme of Beyond the Integrated Library System, introduced by Sebastian, Three people talked about projects that seek to take folio functionality past what is traditionally seen in the ILS. Two of the talks have presentations that are linked from this slide. Naseeb Nassar from Index Data talked about his work on Glint to provide a lightweight infrastructure for sharing and reuse of research data. Ian Ibdidson from Knowledge Integration talked about their thoughts for applying their experience from implementing VDX to a next generation peer-to-peer -peer resource sharing system. And Laszlo Mazaros from Hermisoft talked about ideas for integrating their institutional repository platform into Folio. During the Madrid meeting, the operations team at Index Data and the developers settled on a defined pipeline of software builds with a particular focus on which version to use for testing. The project is using a continuous integration, or CI, system that builds new versions of the software whenever a developer makes a change, as well as on a timed basis. The CI system automatically builds three environments every night that are used for various purposes by the developers, the product owners, and the testers. In order to fully understand this diagram, keep in mind that there are two parts to Folio, the part called Stripes, which is the software running in the browser, and the part called Okapi, which is running on the server. The Folio testing version is the latest version of both of these parts. Because it's the latest version of both parts, there may be a mismatch between the APIs needed by Stripes and the APIs offered by Okapi. This makes this version somewhat unstable. 
The Folio Snapshot version takes this mismatch into account. The Okapi part may not be the latest version, but it is the version that Stripes says it needs, even if that version is older. The Folio Snapshot Stable version is the same as Folio Snapshot, with additional automated integration and regression tests performed that ensure the pieces fit together well. This is the version that will be used by acceptance testers to verify functionality. When speaking about testing, we're actually talking about several kinds of testing for different purposes at different layers of complexity. Ideally, we would like to have automation perform many of the basic tests so that we are confident that by the time something gets to humans, there is a good chance of it working. During the testing sessions, there was a discussion of all of these layers, everything from using quote, code quality tools to the developers themselves writing tests for our specific functionality and needs. One of the decisions that came out of this discussion was a request to move user acceptance testing, where humans are involved in trying the software, to the snapshot stable build of the software. There was also extensive discussion ab about effective feedback loops between the testers, the product owners, and the developers. Now on to next steps. Reporting is one of the functional areas that crosses all of the app domains, and there were breakout sessions focused on the needs for reporting. In one session, the participants talked about the common closed-ended functionality needed in individual apps, uh, the kind of functionality that is circulation reports or canned reports from the fund management app. With this sort of reporting, we decided that we wanted to engage a user experience designer to help develop consistency in the user interface, then find a thin thread of development that begins to build out the reporting functionality. The second breakout session focused on more complex analytics, like ad hoc open-ended queries, and combining data from Folio with other institutional data. In this area, we decided we needed to engage a product owner to narrow and specify the scope. EBSCO also volunteered to develop an early proof of concept for a data lake or data warehouse. One of the key concepts in the Folio platform is a sophisticated view of locations that encompasses a world beyond the library's walls. The breakout group discussed the proposed hierarchy of locations, institution level, campus level, library level, and a parking level, and agreed to move forward with its implementation. Coming out of the meeting, the attendees talked about the need to validate this hierarchy with the NSIP and SIP2 standards, and to create use cases for the collection concept in the proposal. The last bit of functionality discussed that crosses the entire platform is the codex. At the meeting, we were able to demonstrate the codex working with the inventory app developed by Index Data and the EBSCO knowledge base developed by Frontside. Coming out of this meeting, the product owners are going to demonstrate the codex search app with the SIGs and gather feedback. We are also going to look at adding a third source of codex information using the GoKB project. And lastly, the breakout group attendees recognized the need to expand the codex documentation to show app developers how to make use of the codex functionality. This is just a high level view of the three day developers meeting at Madrid. You can find more information by following the links in this presentation and by viewing the agendas, minutes, and other data from the breakout groups in the Google Drive folder. Lastly, Sharon Wiles Young, the convener of the Product Council, developed a list of next steps from the breakouts with a focus on specific interest groups. If you check out, as you check out these resources, mark the calendar for the first Folio and Open Library Foundation Conference to be held 
the week of May 7th at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina. More information about this meeting will be posted shortly. Thank you for watching.